The history of the Mandalorians goes back untold eons. It begins with a species called the Tong, who evolved on the world of Notron. Eventually, a race called the Gel would mysteriously appear on the same planet. Whether they were native or transported there is up to debate. Regardless, the Gel formed 13 nations, all united against one common enemy, the Tong. The battalions of Gel and Tong would battle for centuries, eventually culminating in a battle in the great city of Gel. The Tong successfully took the city, but their leader, nicknamed the Doom of Ulmarach, would fall in battle. The Gel prepared to finally wipe out their adversaries. Now led by Rexutu the Unconquerable, the Tang prepared to make their final stand. As the Gel were about to wipe them out, a volcanic eruption decimated the battalions, nearly ending the species and darkening the sky for two entire years. The Tang, safe from the devastation, took on the name Dawer da Verda, Warriors of the Shadow. Unfortunately for the Verda, the Gel would eventually recover and force them to leave their homeworld. The Taung, forced to become nomads, traveled the galaxy for countless thousands of years, and eventually temporarily settled on Rune. The Gel renamed their conquered world Coruscant, and most likely evolved into modern humans. Continuing their travels, the Taung at last reached a world they found suitable. A jungle planet with a unique geology and full of dangerous wildlife, from pterosaurs to strills to rawls. But no creature was more imposing than the mythosaurs, colossal reptilians which dominated the entire world. The warriors viewed their destruction as a test of skill and so drove them to extinction. Now the undisputed masters of the world, they named it after their leader. Tesolish Mandalore, Mandalore the First. Likewise, the Dawer da Verda would rename themselves again, this time to Mandoade, the children of Mandalore, the Mandalorians. But the Mythosaurs were not forgotten. Clan Keldao would claim their skull as the sigil of their family, but eventually, all Mandalorians would rally under the banner of the Kirbes. The Mandalorians wasted no time in carving out their section of galactic space, settling on Concordan, Ordo, Shogun, Gargan, and a thousand other worlds in Mandalorian space. One of the few species to gain the Tong's respect would be the Mandalian giants, who resided in the same star system as Mandalore. The planet Mandalore had yielded to its denizens Beskar, a metal so dense it could resist the blade of a lightsaber. Thus, the legendary armor of the Mandalorians had its first iteration, the Crusader armor. Among the worlds in the wake of the Mandalorian Crusaders was Fennel, home of the impressive Fennelar shipbuilders. The Mandalorians completely exterminated the species, claiming the shipyards as their own, building massive dreadnoughts there. Eventually, the Mandalorians came to have several border skirmishes with the Galactic Republic, in events called the Pathander Fury and the Nakat Insurgents. Whether they knew the Republic was likely founded by their ancient gel enemies is unknown. Around this time, Mandalore the Conqueror would greatly expand Mandalorian territory. Again, the Mandoade would drive another species to their end in the Nevuta Extinction. Afterward, their current leader, Tekandosi Mandalore, Mandalore the Indomitable, journeyed to the planet Shogun, where he received a vision. The Mandalorians were to seize the worship of their trinity of deities Kadharangir, Hodharan, and Arasum, and begin to worship war itself. And so, the Mandalorian Crusaders came to believe that to wage war was to be divine. The Crusaders would raid the world of Iskadrel and slaughter the Iskaloni, freeing their slaves and taking in many of them, including a young Antos Wyrick. The Crusaders then invaded the world of Basilisk, but this time they did not wipe their natives out. The Basiliskans, in a final effort to drive their attackers off-world, poisoned their own planet. 
they would then somehow degenerate and lose their intelligence, now nothing more than mounts for the Crusaders, and would be renamed Lagarta's War Dragons. But their most important creation would be the Basilisk War Droids. Mechs with absurd amount of firepower also utilized as mounts. The Crusaders' next target was Kuar, which they swiftly conquered and settled upon. Though they remained on Kuar, the Crusaders would conduct several raids in Krath space, among them attacking an important carbonite smelting station. This would attract the attention of the Sith Lord Ulic Keldroma, who demanded that Mandalore and his Crusaders surrender. Mandalore decided that they should settle it in a duel. Keldroma agreed on the condition that if he won, the Mandalorians would join the Krath. The pair dueled on Kuar, the Sith emerging victorious. As a result, the Mandalorian Crusaders joined the Great Sith War, allied with the Brotherhood of the Sith. Their first engagement would be at the Battle of Foerost, where their boarding parties would prove vital in attacking the command station and taking control of the shipyards. Soon after, the Brotherhood of the Sith would at last attack Coruscant itself, marking the first time in millennia the Tong would return to their homeworld. While the beginning of the battle went well in the Sith's favor, the machinations of Alima Keto, who wished to rule the Sith herself, resulted in the Mandalorians and Krath being pulled back, which led to Yulik Keldroma's capture. Eventually realizing Keto's betrayal, Mandalore feigned allegiance to her, and secretly went to Yavin 4 to find Exar Kun, Keldroma's master, and inform him of what truly occurred. Attacking the Senate building alongside Kun, he was able to rescue Keldroma and told him of Keto's betrayal. After her defeat, some Mandalorians went to fight at the battles of Ossus, Iridonia, and the Thispias and Contrum systems, but most headed towards Onderon. The Battle of Onderon would prove to be the final battle of the Mandalorian Crusades. The Crusaders would be equally matched by the Beast Riders of Onderon, but with the reinforcement of the Republic's Swift Fleet, the Mandalorians were devastated. Mandalore called a retreat to Dixun, the moon of Onderon, but his Basilisk war droid was shot down, crashing into its jungles. While he survived the impact, predators would succeed where countless soldiers could not. The following morning, another Mandalorian would come across his remains and place his mask upon his face. He would become Te Anila Mandalore, Mandalore the Ultimate. The Mandalorian Antos Wyrek founded a school on Osadia, in actuality a front to create his Mandalorian Knights in his new generation project, using the DNA of the Jedi Arka Jeth. When his experiments didn't prove fruitful, he traded his own daughter Shantique to the Crucible slaving organization simply to gain more test subjects. The Crucible eventually raided the location when Wyrick went to report his findings to Mandalore. With nothing left, he would rejoin the Mandalorians under the name of Dr. Demagol, Mandalore's mad scientist. Following in his predecessor's footsteps, Te'anila Mandalore went to Shogun where he received a vision. Aliens would be allowed to be recruited into the clans, same as any full-blooded Tongue. While humans would make up the vast majority, Devaronians, Tagorians, Rodians, and Twi'lek alike, among countless other species, would also be common. From here, with the guidance of Mandalore's closest advisor, Cassus Fett, many would choose to call themselves Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders, and adopt more uniform armor. An emissary from the hidden Sith Empire then used the dark side of the Force to manipulate Mandalore, prompting their rapid remilitarization to test the strength of the Republic. Now they would prepare for a full-scale attack on the Republic, but more than a decade would be needed. Around this time, a young Mandalorian warrior named Candrus Ordo would encounter a Yuzan Vong scout ship though he would have no idea of its true nature. The number of small skirmishes would begin again, most notably at the Battle of Althir, being one of the debated starting dates for the Mandalorian Wars. The Mandos took care to not attack the Republic directly, only worlds outside its borders. Cassus Fett would target the world of the Cathar species, 
due to their reputation as warriors and as revenge for standing against them in the past. Like so many others, the Cathar would also be nearly driven extinct, but one Mandalorian would oppose Cassis, saying that they were defeated, saying that wiping them out was unnecessary. That Mandalorian would perish alongside the Cathar. Among the final preparatory strikes would be on Flashpoint Station and four battles in the Surja system. The former would be utilized by Demagol as a research station, where he would dissect Jedi in order to attempt to negate or replicate for sensitivity, and again create his Mandalorian Knights. The Mandalorians were at last prepared to attack the Republic. Thus began the Battle of Vanquo. The attack was, in fact, a distraction to lure the Republic Navy away from Taris, their true target. This marked the beginning of the phase of the Mandalorian Wars known as the Onslaught. The beginning of the year 3963 BBY was marked with the destruction of Flashpoint Station. The mad scientist Demigol had conducted his experiments on the asteroid station, but the acts of Zane Carrick and company destroyed the lab, though Demigol would switch places with Carrick's Mandalorian companion, Roland Dyer, and masqueraded as him for months. The setbacks for Demigol were not synonymous with setbacks for the Mandalorians. The Taurus siege began as planned, with innumerable warships clashing in the skies above. The fighting would be fierce, but nonetheless, the Mandawade subjugated the planet and kept it for three years. Many battles would be waged all over the Republic, including Onderon, Wayland, Ithor, Ord Mantell, the worlds of the Zabrak, Nuwain, and Dagarai Minor. But most notable would be the battles of Sirocco, Amanoth, and Jebel. On Sirocco, the Mandalorians decided not to invade the planet, instead launching a set of nuclear missiles on the cities of the Sereb. At Omanoth, a three-way battle ensued after a failed attempt by the Arcanian Arco Adasca to attempt to sell an army of Exegorths to the winner of a bid between Mandalore and the Republic Admiral Sol Karath. On Jebel, the ancient Sith artifact known as the Moor Talisman created an army of rack ghouls from Neo-Crusader soldiers, prompting Cassus Fett to exterminate all life on Jebel via orbital bombardment. Near the end of the year, a young Jedi and his companions, seeking evidence for Mandalorian atrocities, visit the planet Cathar, and the group experienced a vision of what occurred ten years prior. The Jedi then claimed the mask of the Mandalorian who fell after opposing Cassus Fett's genocide of the Cathar, vowing to take up her struggle, and taking the name Revan. Eventually, Demigol, still seeking to create his army of Force-sensitive Mandalorians, was killed fighting his daughter Shantik and Roland Dyer. His legacy would live on in the Mandua word Demigolka, with several meanings, including someone who commits atrocities. Roland would have a completely different legacy, a hero. He would also serve as the namesake for the legendary Jedi Lord Hoth. The following year's phase of the war would be known as the Mandalorian Triumph. While Demogol's plan never came into fruition, Jedi defectors took on the same name as his plan, Mandalorian Knights. While the small group would eventually return to the Republic and be put on trial, they still nonetheless made their mark. The battles of this year included Eris III, Duro, Essien, Halthor, Dantooine, and the Charos, Randon, and Exedine systems. Revan also claimed the title of Supreme Commander of the Republic Military, becoming the nemesis of Mandalore. Not much knowledge of the latter years of the war remains. What is known is that there was a Battle of Jaga's Cluster, a successful liberation of Taris, a second Battle of Onderon, and a Republic victory in the Liana system. But the most legendary battle of the whole Mandalorian Wars would be its final one. To the Mandalorians it would be called Anila Akan, the Great Last Battle. Others would call it the Battle of Malachor V. Hundreds of ships engage each other above the former Sith world, apparently evenly matched. But then, Revan challenged Mandalore to a duel, which he promptly won. With his dying breath, Mandalore the Ultimate told Revan how the war was, in the end, a machination of the Sith. Meanwhile, the activation of the mass shadow generator superweapon decimated the fleets of both sides, 
but for the Mandalorians, the damage was irreparable. With their unconditional surrender, the Mandalorian Wars came to an end. In order to prevent a new Mandalore arising and continuing the war, Revan took Mandalore's mask and hid it on Rekiad. Thus, the clan scattered, the war machine grinded to a halt, and devoid of leadership, most Mandalorians either became bounty hunters, mercenaries, or bandits. One of the former was the warrior Kandros Ordo. Aiding Revan in his quest to defeat Darth Malak, he came to earn the trust of the Amnesiac Jedi. When his memories returned, and trust in him creating a better society for the Mandalorians, Revan took Ordo to reclaim Mandalore's mask on Rekiad. Thus, Ordo became Tevenkuyanir Mandalore, Mandalore the Preserver. Mandalore eventually found a dying Tong warrior who claimed he was the true successor to Mandalore the Indomitable. He knew the Tong's days were coming to an end and asked Mandalore to care for his clan. Mandalore joined another amnesiac Jedi, Mitra Surik, to defeat the Sith Triumvirate and to find more lost Mandalorian clans. At the Battle of Telos IV, Mandalore took a hundred warriors to aid the Republic and other former enemies against the forces of Darth Nihilus, boarding the flagship Ravager. Despite Mandalore's uniting of several clans under the banner of Clan Ordo, the Manduade would nonetheless remain scattered for over 300 years. The Sith Empire, unsuccessful in attempting to recruit the Mandalorians, then chose a young Mandalorian gladiator on Geonosis as a pawn. With Imperial Intelligence's meddling, the gladiator won every confrontation in the arena. Eventually, he would become Mandalore, and rallied the Mandalorians to him and the Sith Empire. The Sith, and thus Mandalore, ordered a blockade of the Hydean Way, crippling the Republic's war effort against the Sith. But it was not to last. A contingent of smugglers was successful in breaking the blockade. Mandalore, seeking to reclaim the lost morale, eventually called for a great hunt, a galaxy-wide bounty hunting competition. The victor, Artus Locke, challenged Mandalore and defeated him, becoming Mandalore the Vindicated. Once the truth of how the previous Mandalore rose to power came to light, he would be remembered as Mandalore the Lesser. A decade later, during the Cold War, a bounty hunter who became the new Grand Champion of the Great Hunt joined Mandalore's clan Locke. By this time, the most popular forms of armor used among the Mandalorians were the Hunter and Hydra armors, though there would be debate as to whether these counted as Crusader, Neo-Crusader, or their own classification. Said Hunter proved instrumental in ending the Crusader's schism. Several clans, primarily Ordo, Itera, Kelborn, and Kadera, believed that the Mandalorians should be aiding the Republic as Mandalore the Preserver did, not the Sith. After the death of their leader, Jikon Kadera, the uprising was crushed. During the invasion of the Eternal Empire, Mandalore fell in combat against the unending legions of the droid Sky Troopers. Shea Vizsla would then reluctantly become Tegratua Mandalore, Mandalore the Avenger. Mandalore eventually managed to rally many clans to her, including Kadera, now led by Jikon's son, Torian, who became her right-hand man. In revenge against the Eternal Empire, they decided to raid a droid factory on Darvanus, aided by the Outlander. Mandalore, impressed by the Outlander, decided to pledge herself and the Mandalorians to the Alliance in the revolt against the Eternal Empire. The Mandalorians came to their allies' aid at the Siege of Vos, one of the final battles of the revolt. The victors would together form the Eternal Alliance. In the millennium of war that constituted the new Sith Wars, the Mandalorian surprisingly actually aided the Jedi, not the Sith. Their most notable engagement would be at the Battle of Malrev IV. The Jedi Master Murtag recruited a group of Mandalorians to fight alongside the Jedi for the first time in over two millennia. Their adversaries were the Black Knights forces of the Dark Underlord. The ancient Neo-Crusader Jeng was killed by troops sent by the current Mandalore, Unk Kusp. The Gendai bounty hunter Dirge then swore to kill every last Mandalorian to avenge his friend. The scientist who orchestrated these events believed that it would lead to the Mandalorians joining the new Sith Wars full force against 
the Sith. Mandalore's the Binder, Destroyer, and Hammerborn also likely existed around this time. Eventually, the mercenary Aga Awad returned home to find Mandalore in chaos. The Kandorian plague had ravaged its people, killing his family and much of Clan Awad, and the raiders from surrounding sectors took to preying upon Mandalorian starships to the degree where ships had to form defensive caravans. Having enough, he began a movement called the Return. Mandalorians from all around the galaxy returned to their ancestral home, increasing the planet's strength once more. Awad eventually became Tesolus Mandalore, Mandalore the Uniter. An era of unprecedented growth began for the Mandalorians, becoming a major power in the Outer Rim once more. Offering their neighboring star systems protection, they came to become a rival of the Republic. The style of armor Awad wore, shock trooper armor, would be popularized by him and remain the norm for centuries. Around this time, Tarvisla would become the first Mandalorian Jedi and crafted the Darksaber, a weapon which would eventually fill a similar role to the mask of ancient Mandalore's past. After his death, members of Clan Visla would recover the blade in a raid on the Jedi Temple. Gustav Zendlav, a former shock trooper, founded Mandal Motors, a major starship and vehicle producer in the galaxy, and one of the Mandalore sector's main economic bases. After having their territory invaded, Mandalore has destroyed a space station in the Ixtlar system, owned by a human supremacist splinter group of the Bounty Hunters Guild in retaliation. The centuries of prosperity following Mandalore the Uniter would not last, the Republic fearing a repeat of the Mandalorian Wars despite the Mandalorians being allies in their last two major conflicts, organized a strike force consisting of Jedi, the Judicial Forces, and Planetary Security Force volunteers, and launched a preemptive strike against the most important planets of the Mandalorians, namely Ordo, Fennel, Concord Dawn, and Mandalore itself. The brief conflict's orbital bombardment would render massive portions of the world's uninhabitable, white sand deserts. To the Republic, it would be called the Mandalorian Excision. To the Mandalorians, it was Dralhan, the Annihilation. The Republic installed a new puppet government in the city of Sundari, a pacifist group calling themselves Evarla Manduade, new Mandalorians, who set up an aristocratic society distinct from the traditional Mandalorian way of life. They would have opposition in those who secretly continued their traditions in the Akalit, the Faithful. While the traditional ways waned in Sindari and the new Mandalorian stronghold of Kalevala, in Mandalore's countryside and other worlds, the Akalit remained prevalent. On Syntheti, opposite factions hired the Thyrsian Sun Guard and Mandalorian mercenaries, respectively. A three-year-long battle would ensue on the planet's craggy landscape, continuing the age-old feud between the Thyrsians and the Mandalorians. On Ithul, a war between the Akalit and the Ithulans turned into an all-out speciesicide, resulting in the near extinction. The Akalit then began to fragment over disagreement about whether such barbarism was moral. In retaliation for the Ithulans, a group of rogue Jedi, along with Dirge, killed the current Mandalore. In revenge, Mandalorians captured and tortured Dirge, burying him alive taking 60 years for the Gendai to fully regenerate. In 66 BBY, the legendary bounty hunter and future Mandalore, Jango Fett, was born on Concord Dawn. Six years later, a former journeyman protector named Jaster Muriel became Mandalore. Among his first actions was writing the Super Commando Codex. Noting the Ithulan genocide among other atrocities, Muriel decided that the Akalit had become too immoral and wrote several hundred commandments to end their days of piracy and raiding. Many would reject these commands, believing it to restrict their freedom to act. Followers of the Codex would come to be known as Super Commandos, or Ori Ramikade. The debate on whether to accept the Codex tore the Akalit apart, forming the Viman Mandoade, the true Mandalorians, led by Mandalore Jaster Muriel, and the Kirt Sad, Death Watch, led by Overlord Tor Visla, 
Thus began the Mandalorian Civil War. A contingent of true Mandalorians, pursued by Death Watch, fled to Muriel's homeworld of Concord Dawn and took shelter in the home of the Fett family. When the Death Watch found them, they orphaned the young Django, and the true Mandalorians counterattacked, believing that they had defeated the Death Watch. Muriel then decided to adopt Django. The true Mandalorians had been too optimistic. On Corda 6, in a plot six years in the making, the Death Watch allied with the Cordons and planted false information to bring the true Mandalorians to them. Tor Vizsla then killed Muriel from his tank after the latter was betrayed by his lieutenant Montross. Django gathered what remained of his true Mandalorians, ousted Montross as a traitor, and succeeded his adoptive father as Mandalore. But the Death Watch weren't satisfied, just killing their enemy's leader. Setting up another treacherous plot, they conspired with the Governor of Galadron, deceiving the Jedi Order into believing the true Mandalorians had been attacking civilians on Galadron. The Jedi quickly sent a detachment of knights to stop them. The misunderstanding led to the Battle of Galadron, ending with all true Mandalorians aside from Jango Fett perishing. Fett would then be held prisoner by the Governor of Galadron and sold into slavery. This would mark the argued end of the Mandalorian Civil War. But back on Mandalore, battle raged. The ideological differences of Muriel and Vizsla inspired different clans into conflict with one another. The Great Clan Wars had begun. Warlord and Duke Adonai Kryze entrusted the safety of his daughter Satine to the Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Some consider the Great Clan Wars as simply a continuation of the Mandalorian Civil War. The intensity of the conflict would end up further devastating the landscape of the planet, which escalated even more when the Death Watch entered the conflict. But the sheer ferocity of it all began to tire some of the war. Satine was able to convince various warlords to end hostilities. The new Mandalorians, who remained stable due to their strong infrastructure and control of the Biskara Mines, returned to the status of dominant faction again, led by Satine. Bo-Katan, Satine's sister, did not share her sister's optimism and joined Death Watch, leading the elite Night Owl Squad. Unrepentant adversaries to the new Mandalorian regime, such as Death Watch, were exiled from Mandalore, settling on Concordia and other worlds. The Mandalorians who refused to join Satine but also rejected Death Watch informally came to be known as Old Mandalorians. After exile, Tor Vizsla allegedly wrote the Bajorne Kertzad Mandoad, a Death Watch manifesto meant to help Rally Masters train new recruits. It detailed the history of their organization and many more facets of their faction. Then, out of the blue, Django Fett managed to escape slavery, kill Tor Vizsla, and single-handedly fragment the Death Watch. With nothing left, he decided to start a bounty hunting career, eventually gaining legendary status. The mysterious Governor of Vrox, commanding the Mandalorian armed forces, raided several neighboring systems. A detachment of Jedi and Republic judicial forces successfully defeated him. Django Fett, after a series of tests involving defeating the Bandogora cult, accepted Darth Tyrannus' offer to become the DNA template of a clone army. Fett then proceeded to recruit 100 mercenaries, 75 of them Mandalorian, to become the Koivaldar, training sergeants for the commandos of the army. Django's only condition, aside from the considerable pay, was that the first clone be unaltered, whom he would raise as a son. This was the birth of Boba Fett. Django would spend the next ten years raising his son, as well as training the class of a hundred Alpha-class Advanced Recon Commando clone troopers, who would become the Republic's most deadly soldiers. Likewise, the Koivaldar would train the legendary Republic Commandos, unique for strictly operating in four-man squads. At the Battle of Geonosis, Jango Fett would be killed by Jedi Master Mace Windu. The battle marked the beginning of the Clone Wars, a pivotal moment in Mandalorian history. Pre Vizsla, sensing an opportunity to overthrow the new Mandalorians, became Overlord and reorganized the Death Watch. They chose to ally with the Confederacy of Independent Systems, but relations broke down shortly afterward. With fighting reaching dangerously close to the Mandalore sector, Satine Kreese declared Mandalore's neutrality in the war. Following this, the Death Watch staged several failed assassination attempts, and they fled their no longer secret base on Mandalore's moon of Concordia, eventually settling on Karlak. A rogue clone, ARC Trooper Alpha Theta II, 
also known as Spar, became Mandalore the Resurrector, at the urge of a policeman named Fen Chaisa. Pretending to be the son of Jango Fett, he formed the Mando Kabure, the Mandalorian Protectors, a shock force of 212 super commandos recruited from Mandalorian police and former members of Death Watch, strictly adherent to the codex written by Jasta Muriel decades earlier. Eventually, Spar decided to ally with the CIS, believing the Republic to be oppressive, refusing to recognize Satine's leadership along with her neutrality in the war. Much confusion arose on Mandalore's allegiance in the war. The Republic recognized the new Mandalorians, remained neutral, but territories controlled by the old Mandalorians, primarily countryside, were separatist. The Super Commando Codex would regain popularity around this time, further waning new Mandalorian and Death Watch influence. The Protectors would prove to be devastatingly effective, despite their relatively minuscule numbers. Engagements with Dragons for months with droid armies were finished in a day by the Protectors. The Protectors, along with the Crimson Nova and bounty hunters working as mercenaries for the CIS, drove the Republic off-world at the Battle of Null. At New Holstice, they engaged the 327th Star Corps. Despite 40% casualties for the Republic, the Mandalorians were forced to retreat. At the Battle of Zaja, a force of Mandalorian protectors fell in battle against the Republic and were interred by their Geonosian allies in their hives for unknown reasons. Still in hiding, the Death Watch's new location is discovered by Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano and companions. After the Death Watch attacked the native Mingpo village, Tano had engaged Pre Vizsla, eventually escaping. After Tano reported their location, the 104th Battalion was sent in to deal with the Death Watch. After a series of engagements, the Death Watch fled, eventually settling on Zanbar. Not long after, the Death Watch launched a failed attempt to obtain an ancient Sith artifact, the Gauntlet of Crush the Younger, from Dre II and engaged GAR forces possibly from the 187th Legion. Under the influence of Darth Maul, the Death Watch joined forces with the Black Sun, Hut Kajidix, and Pike Syndicate to form the Shadow Collective. The Shadow Collective successfully staged a takeover of Sindari, making the new Mandalorian cease to exist as an entity. Darth Maul then killed Pre Vizsla and claimed leadership of Death Watch, splitting it into those who accepted Maul those led by Bo-Katan Kryze, which came to be called the Mandalorian Resistance. Maul then instated Almec as a puppet Prime Minister. Obi-Wan Kenobi attempted to rescue Septin from captivity, but Maul killed her, simply to cause Obi-Wan to suffer. The entire city became a war zone. Maul's forces came to call themselves Super Commandos as an attempt to appear on the moral high ground, despite having no adherence to the Muriel's Codex. Tired of constant political upheaval on Mandalore, Nam Baroya led 300 members of clans Awald and Baroya to Vlemoth Port. There, they constructed the settlement of Arumorot and entered into an alliance with the Gnaz Trat of Taos. Darth Sidious dispatched General Grievous to deal with the Shadow Collective on Zanbar, but he failed to kill them all. The Collective, regrouping on Ord Mantel, then managed to defeat the Separatist battle group sent to finish them. Soon after, the Republic would engage the Collective at the asteroid base Visla Keep 09, ending in a stalemate. Maul's personal issues and actions on Dathomir eventually caused the collapse of the Shadow Collective, though Death Watch would retain ties with Black Sun. Maul returned to Mandalore soon after. On the other side of the galaxy, the Mandalorian protectors attempted to destroy Kamino's crucial cloning facilities, but were beaten back by the clone garrison. At the Battle of New Bornelex, the protectors engaged the 21st Nova Corps, or Galactic Marines, where the latter employed space trooper armor to literally tear apart the Mandalorian's droid allies. Eventually, Darth City sent them on a mission to Norval II, which would prove to be their last. The Mandalorian protectors were all but wiped out in a trap, a force of 20,000 clone troopers, Jedi, and Elon Nova Guard killed all but three. Spar, Fenchaisa, and Toby Dalla. Spar would suffer from severe stress-induced mental illness afterward, and resigned from his position as Mandalore. There were Mandalorians on all sides of the war. At the Third Battle of Maigido, journeyman protector Fen Rao led Skull Squadron, assisting the Republic in beating back CIS forces. 
Ra had also assisted in the training of clone troopers and pilots, and may have been part of the Quivaldar. Eventually, the Republic would launch the Siege of Mandalore. A division of the 501st Legion would attack the Super Commando forces of Darth Maul with the assistance of Bo-Katan Kreese's Mandalorian Resistance Splinter Group. During the confusion amidst the enactment of Order 66, Maul would disappear. With the war ended, Kirimorut, the stronghold of Clan Skirata, became a haven for clone trooper deserters from the Imperial military. With Maul gone, Lord Kagadish became the overlord of Death Watch, slowly cementing an alliance with the Galactic Empire. Viceroy Gar Saxon was appointed Governor of Mandalore by the Emperor, and led the Imperial Super Commandos, reorganized from Maul's remaining forces. The Empire then established a garrison in the City of Bone, a failed theme park built to resemble the skeleton of a mythosaur. This came to be in a humorous set of circumstances, where a Mandalorian sold the worthless structure by tricking the Imperial Garrison commander, claiming it to be an ancient and spiritually important temple to the Mandoade. The Imperials showed interest in obtaining Beskar mining rights, for its obvious use in the continuation of the Jedi Purge. Concerned with the growing Imperial presence on his homeworld, Fen Shaisa reluctantly became Mandalore, and began training a new force of Mandalorian protectors, as well as preparing to form an insurgency. During the Dark Times, both Bo-Katan's and Fen Shaisa's resistance movements would be branded outlaws and hairy Imperial forces, though many of the people still supported them. Finding out that a member of Clan Skirata had killed one of their own, the Death Watch, aided by Imperials, pursued the clan, who were forced to perform Baslan Shivla, self-exile, until the collapse of the movement. Not long after, Jedi Knight Jax Pavan leveled part of the Oyubat building in Kaldabe in a skirmish with the Black Sun Vigo Prince Shizor's forces. Sometime during the following 22 years, Lorca Gadesh would be succeeded by Teti Viba as overlord of Death Watch. Near the end of the Dark Times, the Jedi Knight Kanan Jarrus attempted to recruit the journeyman protectors on the third moon of Concord Dawn to the Nyset Rebellion, to no avail. The Mandalorian mercenary Chopa Notimo, a veteran of the Clone Wars, assaulted and captured Cloud City on Bespin, holding Garmbel Iblis hostage. Galen Merrick, better known as Starkiller, killed Notimo and rescued Bell Iblis. On Vlemoth Port, clans Awad and Bedroya assisted the Gnaz tribe fighting Zygerian slavers, but their chieftain, Nan Baroya, was captured. The Imperial Super Commandos, who realized the journeyman protectors had allowed the rebels free passage through their system, decimate them. Fen Rao, Sabine Wren, and Ezra Bridger launched a counterattack, engaging the Super Commandos in the canyons of the moon. On Cronest, Imperial Super Commandos attacked Clan Wren. After Gar Saxon dueled and lost to her daughter, Ursa Wren killed Saxon. This would spark the fires of civil war yet again on Mandalore. Clan Wren declared war against the Imperial-aligned Clan Saxon. After this, Gar's brother Tiber Saxon succeeded his brother and gained governorship of Mandalore. Near the end of the Battle of Adalon, Clan Wren assisted the newly formed Rebel Alliance, proving instrumental in destroying the Interdictor cruiser, preventing the Rebels' escape. Back on Mandalore, the Zan Consortium attacked and captured the Supreme Strategist of Mandalore and his Venator-class Star Destroyer. The Consortium continued conducting many acts of piracy in the system, raiding the outlying shipyards of Mandal Hypernautics. A clan chieftain, having had enough of the Consortium, commanded a Keldabe-class battleship to stop them, but failed. After a brief period of more raiding by Zan's forces, Mandal Hypernautics agreed to supply the Consortium with starships in exchange for an end to the pirating in the system. Soon after, Clan Wren conducted a successful operation to rescue Alric Wren, with the aid of the Mandalorian Resistance. They collaborated again to destroy the Imperial Duchess superweapon, a device capable of superheating the Beskar alloy in Mandalorian armor, effectively turning the Mandalorian's greatest strength against them. Sabine Wren, inspired by bo -Katan, gave the Darksaber to her, and clans Visla, Rook, Eldar, Kreez, and Wren swore allegiance to bo -Katan. After this, with Mandalore's strength waning, the Shimholt Amputem Zal, better known as the Suprema, became the governor of Mandalore by the Emperor's command. 
He began the confiscation of Mandalorian armor and launched a slaving operation. Eventually, it reached the point where Mandalorians rivaled Twi'lek in the number of slaves taken to Zygerian worlds. In response, Fen Sa mobilized the protectors and escalated his insurgency against the Imperials. Seeking to make a profit from the Galactic Civil War, the Death Watch and Black Sun developed Mandalorian armor variants, the Crusader armors Marks II and III, and supplied them to both the Rebellion and the Empire. Imperial Commander de Kern, wanting a sample of Tetiviba's DNA for a batch of clone stormtroopers, hired a group of spacers to collect it. They assaulted the Death Watch's base on Endor, though it would be no easy task. The elite Ghost, Wraith, and Bloodguard units fought the spacers, aided by reprogrammed Separatist battle droids. Despite their skilled adversaries, the attackers would prove successful, killing Viba, and finally putting an end to the Death Watch. Back on Mandalore, the Protectors were in shambles. It had reached the point where many of the soldiers did not even have their armor, having to make do with what little equipment they had. It was in this state that they were encountered by Princess Leia Organa, who had been searching for the bounty hunter Dengar, who she believed could lead her to Boba Fett, and in turn, Han Solo, who had been frozen in carbonite. After some escapades, Leia was captured and taken to the city of Bowen, imprisoned along the Protector's second-in-command and the best friend of Fen Shaisa, Tavi Dalla. Shaisa personally launched a rescue mission and freed the slaves of the Empire in the process. During the ensuing slave revolt, the Suprema locked the blast doors and mortally wounded Dalla. Dalla sacrificed himself so that his friend and the slaves could escape, and a massive explosion annihilated the base from within. As a result, many of the freed slaves joined the Protectors and reclaimed the armor and equipment the Suprema had taken. With their strength greater than ever before, they launched a campaign against the Grand Admiral in charge of the Mandalore Sector, Milton Takel. Their efforts would prove successful, and with the preparation of the second Death Star, the Empire could not afford to attack Mandalore without dealing with the Rebel Alliance first. Shaisa was glad for the newly invigorated Protectors, but made sure to emphasize they had to follow a strong moral code and never harm innocents. Soon after the Battle of Endor, and subsequent near collapse of the Imperial Hierarchy, Mandalore joined the Alliance of Free Planets, which would soon reorganize into the New Republic, which they would not join. But before that, a species from a dwarf galaxy known as the Nagai attacked many Alliance targets, including Mandalore, prompting Fenshaisa to seek vengeance aiding the Alliance at the Second Battle of Endor. Upon the revelation that the Nagai had actually been seeking to escape the forces of the tyrannical Toph, Shaisa decided to aid them, joining in the campaign to liberate their homeworld of Nagi from the Toph. The following year, a group of 600 Mandalorian mercenaries, hired by the Empire, took an entire planet hostage, but eventually Lando Calrissian and Fen Shaisa convinced them to back down, bolstering the ever-growing numbers of protectors. Late in the catastrophic Battle of Mindor, the Protectors arrived and turned the tide for the New Republic, being a crucial factor in the defeat of Lord Shadowspawn. Having become a bounty hunter herself, Aylin Vell, the daughter of Boba Fett, killed Spar, mistaking him for her father. The Protectors' past would eventually come back to haunt them. Forty years after their attack on Kamino, Tan Wei hired Boba Fett to kill Fen Shaisa. Having a showdown on Shogun, they would suffer an attack from Sevets, in which Shaisa would save Fett's life. Mortally wounded, however, Shaisa asked Fett to promise him to become Mandalore. Fett then mercy killed Shaisa and followed through on his promise, but not before erecting a memorial to Shaisa on Mandalore. One fateful day, an alien named Nam Anor, under the alias Udelen, contracted the protectors for various mercenary jobs who would unknowingly be aiding the goals of the Yuzan Fong, an immensely powerful race from another galaxy seeking to invade theirs. After they were deemed satisfactorily effective, Anor took a group, including Boba Fett, to see the massive fleet of the Vong. Fett negotiated a deal. If the Vong would spare Mandalore, the protectors would work for them. Even as they reached their agreement, Fett planned on how to defeat the seemingly invincible foe. 
For four years, the Mandalorians would secretly pass along information to the New Republic, all the while training their best on Raxus Prime. Their duplicity, of course, would eventually be figured out. The Vong turned their sights on their former allies and conducted an invasion of their home planet. The entire population of Mandalore would be reduced by a third, but would mark one of the only instances in the entire Vong War where the extragalactic aggressors would be actually successfully repelled. Much like during the Mandalorian Excision, much of the planet would be devastated by orbital bombardment, but this time it would actually prove beneficial. An enormous amount of Beskar would be revealed in the craters, leading to an economic resurgence unseen since the days of Mandalore the Uniter. It was at this time that the Kadikla movement, proposed by Venku Skirata, was brought forward. The idea was a nationalist stance for Mandalore, putting Mandalore first, and moved for a phasing out of the nomadic lifestyle many Mandoade still held, and adopting a more central government which Fett would initially disagree on, but would be swayed. Two million Mandalorians would be recalled from throughout the galaxy, mirroring the return of a millennium earlier. With Mandalore's growth, eventually the Verpine would fall within their sphere of influence, where the Mandalorians would protect them, and the Verpine would supply them with arms. As the Second Galactic Civil War dragged on, eventually Jaina Solo came to Mandalore, seeking techniques that the enemies of the Jedi had used for millennia in order to use said skills against Darth Cadus, her fallen brother. At this time, the Mandalorians would be brought into the war via mercenary work aiding an Admiral Natasi Dalla at the Second Battle of Fondor. Boba Fett, Jaina Solo, and Mandalorian commandos boarded the Star Destroyer Bloodfin, on which the crew had launched a mutiny. The Mandalorians would aid their Verpine allies at the two Battles of Rochi, as promised. At the second battle, Jaina successfully defeated her brother. As a result of their involvement, the fifth fleet sent by Kaidas attacked Mandalore and released the nanovirus derived from Clone Wars era, which specifically targeted the Fett genome. As a result, no Fett could ever set foot on the planet again. Two years after the end of that war, Natasi Dalla, now Galactic Alliance Chief of State, hired a Mandalorian commandos to raid the Jedi Temple and bring in the Jedi Knights which had been suffering from Force Psychosis to bring them into government custody. Dala would launch another attempt, this time led by Protector Belok Ral, with 1,000 protectors and many ground vehicles, effectively blockading the new Jedi Temple. This would put much strain on Jedi-Mandalorian relations, which had previously been positive thanks to the friendship between Luke Skywalker and Fen Shaisa. Much political upheaval had occurred in the next century, but the Mandalorians primarily remained loyal to the Galactic Alliance. Battling against the Fell Empire on Badajef, the Mandalorians retreated after Mandalore Chernan Ordo was betrayed and murdered by Yaga Aux, who served an unknown master. The Mandalorians then withdrew from the Sith Imperial War. Yaga Aux subsequently became Mandalore. With Hondo Kar and Tess Vivek the only ones knowing the truth, of Auk's betrayal, they swore to hunt down Yaga Aux. The Sith Lord Kreia once prophesied that the Mandalorians would experience a slow decline for thousands of years until only one remained, one who would be slain by a Jedi. Whether the prophecy was fulfilled by Jango Fett and the Mandoade after him could be considered an entirely different entity is debatable. What future lies ahead for the Mandoade? The Force only knows. Until the day of Kreia's prophecy, Mi Kuyur Solus Vodean.